Thank you all very much. I really appreciate uh, those very kind words of introduction, especially coming from Andy Card, uh, Andrew Card. He is, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, he is a, a respected uh, leader in his own state of Massachusetts. You can still detect the wonderful glow of his Massachusetts accent. And he is, uh, again, uh, on the other side of the aisle from us, but on the same side of all of the issues that relate to the dignity and worth of people. I was so delighted when I heard that he was willing to uh, uh, take the responsibility at the National Endowment for Democracy uh, because his reputation is so um, magnificent on both sides of the aisle, both sides of the Capitol, up and down Pennsylvania Avenue, and all over the country, in Texas, too. Right? In Texas, too. So thank you, Andy Card, for your kind, very, very generous and kind words, which I accept on behalf of my colleagues. As Frank Wolf uh, will tell you, we always did the, all of our work together in a bipartisan way. We were bipartisan in what we advanced. We were bipartisan in precedents we criticized of both parties <laughs> in what they didn't do. And I'm, I'm excited uh, uh, to be here. Carl Gershman, thank you for your tremendous, tremendous leadership. You would think at some point he might burn out, <laughs> but he just keeps glowing. He just keeps that flame going uh, about his passion, his ardor for, again, respecting the dignity and worth of every person all over the world, wherever they are. Uh, for all of us, it is a challenge to conscience to see what the Chinese government did 30 years ago. What a sad thing, really, behavior outside the circle of civilized human behavior. Some people are here. I was reminiscing with Wer Kashi. He has his, uh, his Uyghur name there now, but Wer Kashi, when we met him. And when he came back, and he came back from, he came right after it happened, like a matter of, it seemed like days to us, he was testifying in Congress. Remember Frank and Chris Smith was there, bipartisan way, Tom Lantos had the hearing, and he came, this boy, really, he tells me he was 21 years old, but a young person of college age, so much courage. And when he came to the Capitol, and others came with him, but he was sort of one of the, the, the names that we all knew, the cameras were ablaze. The whole world understood what happened. And uh, the, the courage was just so dazzling of all of these young people. Now, today we have many veterans of Tiananmen here, all of whom uh, demonstrated that courage, all of whom uh, the command I respect, all of whom, each of whom has taught us a lesson about courage and not forgetting. So I'm, I couldn't be here earlier because we had two things simultaneously interwoven on the floor. We had the, uh, the, Dreamers, the Dreamers Bill, that, you know, that was very important to many of us. And then in between the Dreamers Bill, they decided to take up the vote on the uh, 30th anniversary commemoration resolution. And so I couldn't move because I wanted every single vote. Everybody said, well, you have, a, you have a majority. You can leave now. I'm not leaving. You have two-thirds. You can leave now. I'm not leaving. I want the message to be clear that the House of Representatives voted unanimously every single vote, and they did. And they did. And they did. <laughs> and again, I accept that on behalf of all of my uh, my colleagues, Ileana Roslight, my girlfriend, I'm so glad she's back here, my girlfriend. Uh, she knows I miss her, but she knows how hard it is to get 100% of the vote of the floor. Right, Frank? You, you too. But that's the Chinese government. They were threatening me all day. I can just imagine what they were doing, the embassy, with the rest of the members. But 100% of the vote saying, we remember. We will not forget. The Congress. The House of Representatives, it was great. So here we are, so here we are, a challenge to the conscience of our country, a challenge to the conscience of what, 30 years ago, how could it be? In some ways it seems so recent, in other ways it seems so 
three decades away, a long time. But the, uh, the just reemergence of so many people at this time. I guess, as I said today at the rally, the 30 years should be a sufficient evidence that the policy that our country has ad adopted toward China in the hopes of getting better trade policy, better security policy, and better human rights policy simply hasn't worked. And we might want to try a different approach. So it's a, it's a very, uh, it's very interesting to think that we saw at that time, 30 years ago, before some of you were born, all of these, a million in, in Tiananmen and there and all over, the, all over China, all of these young people coming forth, supporting our founders, having a, a goddess of democracy that, that looked like our Statue of Liberty, and then to have that snuffed out. A, a few, several years later, the Chinese invited me as speaker to come in a, a re, uh, shall we say, let's redo our friendship, because for all those years they were saying I was the most hated person in China. So <laughs> they, they <laughs> I, I wore that as a badge of honor. And uh, in any case, they said, let's reset our friendship. So we're gonna, you're going to come, speaker of the house, and we're going to, and I said, we'll go and we'll talk about uh, climate change, because that was some place where we had common ground. But I said, you can't expect me not to talk about human rights. It just, it just isn't possible. But why I bring it up is because on the way over, we had all this reading and film and all the rest of it. And what was so sad, because that was like, what, maybe 10 years ago. What was so sad about it was that, it was 09, I guess. That was so sad about it was that they, the, the man beh before the tank, the man before the tank, one of the most iconic visuals in the world, and all that it symbolized was totally unknown to the students in China. When some people ask them, what does this mean to you, holding it up, they say, oh, is that a commercial for something in America? Is that a commercial for something? It's a commercial for democracy. It's a commercial that we're with the man before the tank, not with the man who ordered the tanks out. But imagine that they have completely eradicated that image, had maybe now with more social uh, media and the rest, that some of that will be made known to some people there other than the people of Hong Kong. And aren't we proud of them the way they, the way they turned out? <laughs> so in any event, I, I just want to share some thoughts with you because this is a very emotional thing for all of us. I don't think anybody went back more than Frank. He, he was in the prison, Beijing prison number one, seeing what they were doing with prison labor. I mean, this we were so, and have been and continue to be, so close to this issue, and we thought we were going to get some cooperation if we could prove, and Frank did prove that what they were doing was wrong, but, but we couldn't convince a Democratic or a Republican president to agree with us. So in any event, uh, just to say that we remember the Uyghurs, what, three million is it? Where? About three million in education camps? What? And why are why is we're not speaking out? We have to. And I've said to the people in the Muslim world, these are your Muslim brothers and sisters. You've got to speak out. The Tibetans, so sad, their religion, their culture, their language, trying to snuff that out. Uh, the um, in Hong Kong, oh my gosh, so scary, extradition legislation which puts everybody there at risk. One country, two systems. What two systems are they? None of them is acceptable uh, in terms of how they view uh, democracy. And with journalists, lawyers, authors, human rights activists, and all the rest, so, so at risk in Beijing and throughout China. So it all is still happening. It's getting worse, I think, than even when we visited China that year and then when we visited Tibet recently under this pr current president, President she, I, it, it seemed worse than even under President Hu. So we have important work to point out. This is a challenge to our conscience, and as I said over and over again, 
If, if we do not speak out for human rights in China because of an economic relationship, we lose all moral authority to talk about human rights any place in the world. In the world. So Dr. Bob Fu of the Tibet Action Institute, World Uyghur Congress, Dalton, is that? Uh, to um, London, Tafong, Tang, yeah, just Tang, Ta Tang. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, congratulations, congratulations to all of you. I have that uh, goddess of democracy, and I display it with great pride in my office. Thank you, Thomas Marsh, uh, for uh, uh, make, make, uh, uniting us all with that beautiful, beautiful statue, and that it comes to you from the National Endowment for Democracy is such a great uh, uh, imprimatur. There could be none better than to say what a champion you are, how we all re globally recognize that. Thank you for your courage. Congratulations on the recognition you are receiving. We still have very important work to do. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some points.